Welcome to John Quincy Adams' President and the Corrupt Bargain Study Guide. Four candidates ran for president in the election of 1824. Andrew Jackson, John Quincy Adams, Henry Clay, and William Crawford. The results of this election were different than we'd had in any previous election. The popular vote are the actual votes received from the people. The electoral vote goes to whoever gets the most votes in each state. And the electoral votes are the combination of the number of representatives and the number of senators each state has. In the election of 1824, Andrew Jackson won both the popular and the electoral votes. John Quincy Adams came in second. Henry Clay, a very low third, and William Crawford right under him for fourth. Now you would think that this would mean that Andrew Jackson won the presidency. Not so. In order to win the election, the candidate must receive a majority. And a majority is one more than 50%. In this case, Jackson won a plurality. He did get the most votes but he did not get a majority of the votes. In that situation, the U.S. House of Representatives is left with the job of voting to determine who will be the next president. Henry Clay was Speaker of the House. That means he was the leader of the House of Representatives. Because of this, he was immediately eliminated from the running for president when the vote went to the House of Representatives. So he chose the candidate that had the closest ideology to him, and that was John Quincy Adams. He put his support, and he put the power of his position as Speaker of the House, behind John Quincy Adams. Jackson accused Clay of using his influence to help John Quincy Adams win the election, which he absolutely did. Jackson's supporters claimed that Adams and Clay worked together to steal the election from Jackson. In return, he was given the position of Secretary of State, and they called it the corrupt bargain. Despite the claims of Jackson and his supporters, when the House voted, John Quincy Adams did receive the largest number of votes, and therefore he was declared the sixth President of the United States. Adams knew that people were very upset about the outcome of the election. He planned to try to change their minds by offering many new government programs. Problem was, he was seen as a very staunch Federalist, even though that wasn't his official party. His principles were Federalist principles because that was what he was raised. John Adams, his father, was also a staunch Federalist. Most of the programs that he wanted to institute were very unpopular with the people and with Congress. They were expensive. They required a lot of money, increased the size of government. And Americans did not want an expensive government program. They'd gotten used to what we had under Thomas Jefferson and James Monroe. Adams then followed up by passing a tariff. The tariff of 1824 was passed to protect factories in the North. It's called a protective tariff, and by raising the prices of goods being imported, especially from Britain, it allowed American prices to stay low and people tended to buy American because it was cheaper. Unfortunately, the tariff of 1824 was not enough, and so Adams then also passed the tariff of 1828. It was an extremely high percentage tariff, which the South referred to as the tariff of abominations. Now, despite the fact that John Quincy Adams was president when this particular tariff was passed, it really didn't come into effect and start causing problems until after the next election in 1828. Adams chose to run for president again in 1828, but this time the results were a little bit different. This time he lost and Andrew Jackson won the presidency. Now you know a little bit about John Quincy Adams as president and the corrupt bargain.